Hello, a very warm welcome to you, Freedom Church Online. Today, we're going to enjoy Christmas at home together. This may be the first time that many of us have celebrated Christmas online, yet we want to do our very best to make this a memorable and a very joyous Christmas 2020 for us all. We have a wonderful selection of carols, which we would love you to join in and sing along with us from the very comfort of your own home. We are also blessed to have some outstanding performances for us to listen to, recorded especially for us by friends in their homes, Ria, Lydia Rose, Michael and JP. And finally, we have the details of the charities that we will be supporting this year, but more of that later on. Now, please join us for our first carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Luke 1, 26 to 38. During the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God's presence to an unmarried girl named Mary living in Nazareth, a village in Galilee. She was engaged to a man named Joseph, a true descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Grace to you, young woman, for the Lord is with you, and so you are anointed with great favor. Mary was deeply troubled over the words of the angel and bewildered over what this may mean for her. But the angel reassured her, saying, Do not yield to your fear, Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen to surprise you with a wonderful gift. You will become pregnant with a baby boy, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be supreme and will be known as the Son of the Highest. And the Lord will enthrone him as king on his ancestor David's throne. He will reign as king of Israel forever, and his reign will have no limit. Mary said, But how could this happen? I am still a virgin. Gabriel answered, The spirit of holiness will fall upon you, and the Almighty God will spread his shadow of power over you in a cloud of glory. This is why the child born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your aged aunt Elizabeth has also become pregnant with a son. The barren one is now in her sixth month. Not one promise from God is empty of power, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary responded, saying, This is amazing. I will be a mother for the Lord. As his servant, I will accept whatever he has for me. May everything you have told me come to pass. And the angel left her. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Oh, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, 
did you know? Amazing. A baby born in a barn. No comforts, no grandeur, no social standing, no privileges, no voice or influence. Yet, he's at the centre of time. God on earth with us. His name is known throughout the world. The best-selling book is all about him. He came from heaven to earth to rescue from all that's gone wrong so that we can go from earth to heaven. All invited, every man, woman, boy and girl, accept, don't decline. Room for all. Come as you are, but you won't stay as you are. A new beginning passed behind you. Freedom. His love poured in. Truth revealed. A life restored. A deep assurance of belonging to him. Maybe on our own, but never alone. Basking in a love that never fades. Peace, purpose, hope. Overflowing thankfulness. Worship rises in our hearts. Who can compare? Christmas is here. Jesus is here. Not magical, but miraculous. Time to celebrate the saviour of the world.
What does Christmas mean to you, I wonder? We have asked this question to quite a few people. Let's hear what they have to say. Firstly, Amy or Ewing, who is Vice President of Oxford Centre for Christian Apologetics, as well as being Senior Vice President of Ravi Zacharias International. Hi, I'm Amy or Ewing, and what does Christmas mean to me? Well, when I think about the Christmas message, I think about a teenage woman called Mary who was a refugee um, and living in a kind of context of occupation who heard from God that she had been chosen to carry the Son of God to be born into this world. The idea that God who created this universe with all of its complexity would want to reveal himself to us at all in human flesh is pretty amazing. But the fact that he would choose a, a humble teenage girl like Mary to do that just blows me away because it says something about the heart of our God and who he's interested in, who he cares about. You see, he, he, he doesn't just reveal himself to powerful people. He's not just interested in kind of big plate tectonic movements of, you know, political empires. He's actually interested in you and me. He wants relationship with us in our ordinary lives. And um, he's willing to, to go the distance of the creator of the heavens of the earth to actually be born. And he's willing to travel that distance to be born of a teenage girl called Mary living under occupation over 2,000 years ago. So Christmas means to me that God loves you and me enough. He cares about relationship with us enough to cover all that distance and to show that, that you matter to him and that I matter to him. Next, we have James Hodges, our true Welshman, who was introduced to us in September this year. Hi everyone, um, this Christmas will be very different um, for, for one main reason is that this will be the first Christmas that my wife Lucy and I will have our daughter with us. Um, she's our first little girl and um, I'm quite excited to be honest because it reminds me of those years growing up um, around this time where we were excited and there was going to be a lot of presents and the family and I'm looking forward to experiencing that with my daughter but um, there's a greater reality that reminds me that when um, God, my Heavenly Father, sent His only Son Jesus into the world to be born of a virgin, that not only was He giving Him to me to, to, to die on a cross for me, but also that I'd be with Him forever. And yes, I'm enjoying this time with my little daughter, but more than that, a greater reminder that God loved me so much that He gave His only child. And lastly, for today, Alison from our online church community. So what does Christmas mean to me? It means spending time rejoicing, having fellowship, feasting with family, friends, loved ones and people that need support at this time. Showing gratitude, love, sharing and making other people happy and remembering the birth of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Luke 2 verses 8 to 20. That night, 
in a field near Bethlehem, there were shepherds watching over their flocks. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared in radiant splendor before them, lighting up the field with the blazing glory of God, and the shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them saying, don't be afraid, for I've come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone everywhere. For today in Bethlehem, a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. You will recognize him by this miracle sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Then all at once, a vast number of glorious angels appeared, the very armies of heaven. And they all praised God singing, glory to God in the highest realms of heaven for there's peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. When the choir of angels disappeared back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go, let's hurry and find this word that is born in Bethlehem and see for ourselves what the Lord has revealed to us. So they ran into the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in a feeding trough. Upon seeing this miraculous sign, the shepherds recounted what had just happened. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story was astonished by what they were told. But Mary treasured all these things in her heart and often pondered what they meant. The shepherds returned to their flocks, ecstatic over what had happened. They praised God and glorified him for all they had heard and seen for themselves just like the angel had said. Dark the hair, broad angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy my old God and sinners reckon. Out. Joyful all the nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn
business Like ten life to all he brings Prism within his healing wings Mount he lay his glory by On earth men no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give the same Hey guys, it's a great privilege for me to be able to be a part of this Christmas carol service. And uh, there are many people who love celebrating Christmas and I'm one of them. But I also understand that Christmas can be a difficult time for some people as well. You know, there are many things happening around us at Christmas time. And I wonder what other things that you recognize. Do you recognize perhaps that your mum is a bit stressed trying to get a nice dinner on the table on Christmas day, or that she struggles to find the right presents for all the different people that she's trying to buy for? Or perhaps you notice that the older men in your family are not overly excited this Christmas about getting another pair of socks. Maybe you recognize that look of excitement on the faces of the children that you know when they talk about how they're going to open their presents or, or how they're hoping that it's going to snow so that they'll be able to play in the snow. I know my children are excited about that and we love to take them sledging if it snows. And maybe you recognize that there are one or two people around you who don't have anybody to celebrate Christmas with this year. And perhaps you're thinking about ways that you can include them in what you and your family are going to be doing. I just wonder if Jesus, the Son of God, was born today, how many people would recognise him or recognise the significance of why he came into the world? And I'd like to take a moment just to look at a little side story of this Christmas story that we find in the Bible. And it's about a man who recognised Jesus and who Jesus was, even when Jesus was just a small baby. So in Luke 2, verses 25 to 33, it says this. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And then it says the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Simeon recognized that Jesus was not just an ordinary baby. That, but that he was the one who God had sent to bring salvation to the whole world. But how did Simeon recognise Jesus? You see, the temple courts would have been full of people. I mean, there would have been a real hustle and bustle. And somehow 
Simeon recognised that Jesus was the baby that God had sent to save the world. And if you compare Simeon to the Pharisees 30 years later, think about this. Jesus was a fully grown man. He was on the streets proclaiming the gospel. He was healing the sick. I mean, blind eyes were being opened as he spoke the word to them. He was casting out demons. He was raising the dead. Everybody was talking about him. But the Pharisees did not recognize Jesus as the Messiah, as the savior of the world. And they were the guys who were supposed to know the scriptures better than anyone. And you might think to yourself, how could they be so blind? But actually, we can only recognize Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but three times in three verses, it said of Simeon, three things. It said, the Holy Spirit was on him. And then it said in the next verse, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. And then the next verse said, he was moved by the Holy Spirit. So the only reason Simeon recognized who Jesus was, was because the Holy Spirit revealed it to him. And I want to ask you this Christmas, do you know who Jesus really is? And I'm not just talking about what you've heard about him or maybe what people have said in church or what you heard growing up. I'm saying, do you really know? What I'm asking you is, has God clearly revealed to your heart that Jesus is the saviour of the world and actually is your personal saviour? Do you recognise him? You see, there are many people who know the story of Jesus, but knowing the story is very different from knowing the person of Jesus yourself. And actually, Jesus once asked his disciples if they really knew who he was. Matthew 16, 13 to 17, it says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But Jesus said, what about you? He asked them, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And this is what Jesus said to Simon, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. You see, it's not enough just to know what people say about him. It's not enough just to know uh, about Jesus from what you've heard from others. We need God to reveal it to us personally. Jesus said, my Father in heaven revealed that to you. And that only happens through the Holy Spirit. And when we recognise who Jesus is, it changes everything. When we recognise who Jesus is, we realise that we can really know God and have a living relationship with him. When we recognise who Jesus is, we know that he has paid the price for our sins and that we can be completely forgiven. And you know what? Whether it snows this year or not, we know that he has washed us white as snow. And when we recognise who Jesus is, we know that we can hand all of our burdens over to him and that he is more than capable of handling every single one of them because he cares deeply for us. And when we recognise who Jesus is, we know that he has a better plan for our lives than we could ever come up with. And therefore we can give every decision over to him and ask him to guide us in the path that he has for our lives. And finally, when we recognise who Jesus is, we know that there's healing for our pain. 
that there's hope for our future, that there's peace and joy that are not dependent on our circumstances. We know that there is acceptance, even though this world may have made us feel rejected. And we know that there is unconditional love waiting to be poured out upon us every single day by our Father in heaven who made us. And my prayer is that this Christmas, each one of us will recognise who Jesus really is in a greater way than ever before. And that as we give our lives fully to him, we will experience all that he came to this earth to bring us. And if you've never given your life to Jesus and you'd like to, why don't you just pray this prayer with me? Father God, I recognise who Jesus is and I thank you for sending him to die in my place so that I can be forgiven and washed as white as snow. I thank you that Jesus rose from the dead and because of that, I too can have a new life. I want to say sorry for my sin, for everything that I've done in my life that has displeased you. And today I'm choosing to let go of my old life and to receive eternal life, to turn from my sin and to seek to live a life that pleases you. Please would you fill me with your Holy Spirit right now and help me to follow you with all my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've just prayed that prayer, please do contact one of the leaders of Freedom Church because they'd love to hear about it and they'd love to talk with you about it. And I just want to say from me and my whole family, uh, a big Merry Christmas to all of you. God bless you. brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul it's worth thrill of hope weary world rejoices beyond a breaks a new and glorious morn
Each Christmas, we as a church love to support those in need. This year, we have chosen three different projects, local, national and international. Locally, food parcels for families and those on their own. We know of a number of people who, for a myriad of reasons, cannot afford Christmas or who will spend it alone. So we're sending out food parcels next week. Then nationally, we are supporting Home for Good, set up by Krish Kandahar, who wants to see every child in the UK in a home, foster or adoption. A child in the UK is taken into care every 15 minutes. That means during this Christmas at Home Together carol service, four children will have been taken into care. waiting, waiting for a home, waiting for a family. She's already seen things and experienced things in her life that no child should have to go through. But now she's waiting, waiting for someone to come and tell her it's going to be all right. Someone to take her home for good. But the sad thing is she's not alone. There are 4,600 children currently waiting for adoption in the UK alone. And another 8,000 families needed to help girls like her that are in transition, that have been taken from their families, are in care and are waiting, waiting for somewhere permanent. Those numbers sound astronomical. But when you think that the three organisations that are working together, Care for the Family, the Church's Child Protection Advisory Service and the Evangelical Alliance, we collectively are in touch with 15,000 churches. That means we only need one family per church to step forward for fostering or adoption and for the church to wrap around them and we can make a difference to all the children that are waiting. Would you help us? Would you play your part in helping us find these children a home for good? Next is Care for Children, run by our friend Robert Glover. In the last 20 years, they have taken one million children out of orphanages in China and placed them in homes. Most of the children have special needs and they provide training and support for all of these families. And Care for Children are working throughout Asia to introduce this in many other countries, including Cambodia, Vietnam and more. children had, uh, had a very tough life before they were found by the policemen or be collected to the orphanage. They've been abandoned 
And you imagine being abandoned in a city at a very young age and not having anyone to fend for you. And we know where the children have maternal deprivation, they will develop sometimes mental illness, physical illness, and even die. In the orphanage, they had an institutional care, which means that they got good infrastructure facilities, but they're not able to get any kind of family love or care. The reason we are here is because this is a very special project. This lovely village is doing something marvelous. People here, they give their real heart to the children. They love the children and they support each other. I feel like I've been a lot of places um, around the world and I just don't know that I've ever seen a more beautiful group of people. It's taken 17 years to get to this place. This is the dream that came has come true. To see, you know, not only the mothers and fathers, but the brothers and sisters, the uncles and aunties, and then the extended family, the whole community come together. A lot of the work initially goes in in the orphanage, which is in Kunming, two hours from here, training the parents uh, and preparing the children. The children need preparation as well. All the children we placed with this village uh, from the Kuomi orphanage and up to 99% have difficulties, physically and mentally. We believe that um, you know, families are good for children. Every child needs a mother and a father. Yeah, there is real detail gone into caring for these children here. And I think that's one of the real important things. You see these children in families and you just try to imagine where would they be if this wasn't here. Yesterday, the, the, the little performance they did was just a pleasure to see. And, I, and it just spoke volumes to me that, you know, here's a community that put those children first. When Robert uh, took us to a conference in Thailand, we were introduced to Jim D from India. He believes that India alone has 20 million homeless children. The need is great around the world. It would be wonderful if you would like to join us in giving to these charities so that we can bring a little joy to the world this Christmas. For the details of giving, please, please send us an email. And uh, uh, there is a link in our bio. And now it's time to join in with the next carol. Oh, 
truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his Just before Michael sings and brings us to a close, may we wish you all a very happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit remain with you and give you peace this Christmas time. Absolutely. And before we go, we just want to say thank you so much for Ria and to Lydia Rose and to JP and Michael as they have so kindly recorded themselves and actually sent it in for us to enjoy. We really appreciate them taking the time. But now, please enjoy Michael singing us out for this Christmas at home together. God bless you. Goodbye. Have yourself a merry little Christmas Let your heart be light From now on our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yule tight gay From now on our troubles will be miles away Here we are as in olden days, happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Through the years, we all will be together if the fates allow. Hang a shining star upon the highest bow and have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Through the years we all will be together if the fates allow 
hang a shining 